Hey, this is Pastor Adam. Thank you for taking time to watch this video. Um, it's an honor to be able to uh, present this information on Jonah. Uh, special thanks to Tom and Sean for all the work that go in uh, to making these videos. And uh, thank you um, for the work that you put in every week, um, serving your class, shepherding your people, and preparing to teach. I know that it's not a small thing that you do, and I really appreciate um, all that you do. Now, one of the things with Jonah uh, that your book does this week, it picks up a little bit into uh, chapter one, actually way into chapter one. So one of the things I want to do in this video is talk about um, some context and some background. Okay, as you open up a book, um, as you're teaching it, uh, sometimes it's helpful to know who wrote it, what was going on, um, when it was written. So one of the things that's different with Jonah than maybe um, Amos, Micah, some other books that you're going to be teaching on, is that the people in your class have a preconceived idea of what the book of Jonah is when they walk into your room. Amos, probably not so much. Jonah, yes. Why is that? Uh, well, we have books like these that are great little story, story Bibles, and uh, this is one um, from my two daughters. And... It, overall, it does a great job, uh, but the way that it ends, it ends with saying, this time Jonah obeyed God, the people in Nineveh were sorry for doing bad things, so God forgave them, and there's a happy picture of Jonah preaching to the people of Nineveh, and then we jump right into the New Testament. Um, that's actually not quite how things went. Um, similar to Noah's Ark um, and Jonah, we get these ideas in our mind from a young age of what these books of the Bible are about. Noah's Ark, for instance, we think about um, the boat, um, animals going in the boat, and, and the rainbow. The story of Noah and Noah's Ark is actually a story of God's wrath, um, a holy God pouring out his wrath um, against sin, and an entire population was wiped out. We don't normally like to think about that, but that's why Noah's Ark happened. Um, but we hear the stories when we're little, we see the pictures, and so we grow up as adults and we get this in our mind. So a lot of times with Jonah, we think about the prophet that didn't want to go, um, the whale, the fish swallowed Jonah, and then he was spit on, on ground, and then he goes and preaches, and people are saved, and everything's great. But as you probably know, that's not quite um, how the story goes. The fact is that Jonah disobeyed God, and a little spoiler spoiler alert for the next video that you'll see, um, is that he kind of had a rotten attitude um, while he did it, and he didn't have a very good attitude um, when it was over. So what I want to do today is give you a few themes to think about and some uh, special points of application that you can do uh, with your group. So um, some background on Jonah. Uh, who wrote Jonah? Most of the evidence points to Jonah being the author, um, the, the details of the events, um, the fact that uh, it wasn't uncommon in the Old Testament for somebody to write um, in third person. Um, we see that in Exodus 11, uh, 1 Samuel 12. So some of those things provide um, support that Jonah is the author. Uh, who was Jonah? Jonah was a prophet from Galilee, um, unlike what the Pharisees said that uh, no prophet comes from Galilee. That's actually not true. Uh, Jonah was a prophet um, from Galilee, unlike what they stated in John 7, 52. Uh, Jewish tradition states that he was the son of the widow that Elijah raised from the dead. Now, we don't know that 100%, but that's what we see from um, tradition. Uh, his name means dove. Uh, one commentator that I read said that uh, Jonah was actually more like an angry hawk than a dove because he r refused to obey God. So that's a little bit about Jonah. Uh, so what about Nineveh? What is Nineveh? What's the big deal about Jonah going there? Nineveh was a very large and powerful country. Uh, it was the capital of Assyria, and it was a political and spiritual enemy of Israel. It was founded by Nimrod, and Israel and Jonah, they did not like Nineveh um, at all. So we'll, we'll get into that a little bit more in a minute. Uh, two things I thought were unique. Um, that we learn about Jonah. Um, it's the only recorded time that God sent a prophet to a Gentile nation to call it to repentance. It's also the only recorded time that we see a prophet of God being told to go communicate a message and the prophet refusing. So what did God tell Jonah to do? Most of us are familiar with that. He told them, he told Jonah to go and preach a message of repentance 
to Nineveh. And of course, what did Jonah do? He fled or he, he tried to flee. We can't flee God. We'll look at that more in a, in a few minutes. So wh why, why did God want to send him to Nineveh? Why would God do that? It, uh, this obviously was not the norm um, for God to send his prophet to do that. Why? Well, in part, he was doing it um, as a rebuke to Israel. Um, they had succumbed to spiritual arrogance. Uh, they did not want the people of Nineveh to know about God. Uh, they had a, a bad attitude about it. And as God's chosen people, who were chosen because of no merit of their own, um, just because of the grace of God and His love and mercy towards them, that should have created an attitude of humility, uh, but instead it caused arrogance. And, of course, we, we can learn the same thing today. We're saved by, by grace through faith, not by works, um, so that no one can boast. So we have the same privilege um, of God's grace as well. So that should humble us to want to take God's message um, to other people. Who are we to withhold His love from others, obviously? One of the things that Jesus talks about in the parable of the workers in the vineyard, uh, you know, the, the workers made a deal with the owner of the vineyard early in the day, and other people throughout the day and later on in the day made a deal. And then they were all paid the same. And then the people that had worked more, put in more, they were unhappy because other people got something that they didn't feel like they deserved. And I was like, why are you upset? I kept my deal with you. I kept my deal with them. You know, who are we? We should be thankful for the grace and love that God has poured out to us. Um, but sin has affected our hearts. And we see that as you've studied and taught through the Old Testament, you've been in Kings, uh, you've been in Amos, and you continue to see that fallen people will keep making bad decisions and we keep falling short of what God wants us to do. So why did Jonah not want to go? God told him to go. He tried to flee. Why did Jonah not want to go? Well, Nineveh would have been the last place that a prophet of God uh, would, would de desire to go in their own power, um, not following God's will. Um, think about, you know, the story of the Good Samaritan that Jesus told. Um, you know, the audience that Jesus told about the, the Good Samaritan would have been, and they were, they were blown away that something good would be said about anybody from Samaria. And uh, Samaritans were looked down upon. They were, they were less than. Um, a similar fashion, imagine being told that about going to Samaria, about doing that with going to Nineveh. Jonah had the same thought with going to Nineveh. He thought, these are the last people that I want to go minister to. They do not deserve anything. God, why do you want to save them? That is not what we need um, to do. So again, Israel had a sense of spiritual superiority. And those factors, along with uh, Jonah um, just being in disobedience, kept him from wanting to go. So one of the interesting things and where your book jumps in is when Jonah is thrown off the boat and then he gets swallowed. One of the things that, that Jonah showed with him not wanting to go, when he was on the boat, Jonah could have said, hey, turn the boat around, take me to the place, take me somewhere along the way, to Nineveh, help me get there. He could have took some sort of action um, so that the storm would have stopped. But and this is kind of where your book jumps in. But instead, Jonah would have rather died than obey and preach the message of repentance to Nineveh. His sin and his rebellion had taken him down such a bad path that he was basically committing an a, a assisted suicide. He knew what was going to happen if they throw him in the water. Now, he was willing to do that instead of having the boat take them somewhere and show an act of submission to God that would have caused the storm to stop and go preach to Nineveh. So Jonah would have rather died than, than obey God. An illustration... Yeah, you know, my, my kids, you know, when, you, when you first have kids, you come up with an idea of what it's going to look like and how they're going to obey. Um, before I had kids, I used to see um, people in the grocery store, people at Walmart, um, their kids would be disobeying, they would be crying, and I always thought, you know what, when my kid cries one time, I'm going to discipline them, and that will be the end of it, I will do it perfectly, and that'll be it. But we see that when you have kids, you learn pretty quick that that's just not the way it is. And I've even learned now after having two daughters and a son that disciplining my son is different than disciplining my daughters. So I had this idea, uh, a family told me about this, and it sounds great, and I think it's a great goal, and I think it can get your kids on a better track. First time obedience. 
You know, when your kids ask you the second, third, fourth time for the piece of candy after dinner when they don't need it, you tell them asked and answered. First time obedience. That should be our goal. And delayed or partial obedience is really not obedience at all because when we have to give our kids second and third warning was that don't do that again or you know what's going to happen don't do that again you're just allowing them to sin so the same thing with Jonah he should have obeyed he should have obeyed first and fully our kids should do that and we should obviously do that too so what did God do after Jonah refused to go God pursued him Praise God for His grace and mercy in pursuing us, that when we run from Him and we run from His will, He pursues us. Jonah thought that he could hide, but I was reminded what David said, excuse me, in Psalm 139, 7 through 10. There is no hiding from God. Let, Let me read you what David wrote in Psalm 139. David said, Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven... You are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the dawn, if I dwell in the remotest part of the sea, even there your hand will lead me, and your right hand will lay hold of me. So Jonah thought that he was running from God, but you you can't run from God. God knows where you are. He knows what you're doing. He knows why you're doing it. God knows everything. So God had sent a supernatural storm. That this was a storm that the sailors were not used to. These, these were men that were experienced in being on the water, being in the boat, and they, they quickly um, feared for their lives. And so it, you read in the text that each person on the boat um, started praying to their own God. And so they started doing their own thing to try to figure out what was going on. And so they, they get to Jonah, and they find Jonah sleeping. Like, Jonah, why are you asleep? And so that they, they cast lots, and we don't know exactly what that looks like, but that they cast lots, and that showed that Jonah was the problem. And so they, they asked Jonah, why have you done this thing to us? We're going to die. And Jonah said, you, you throw me off the boat, um, and the storm will stop. And we know that that, that is, is what happened. One of the interesting things is to think about who were the most obedient people um, in this narrative, in this passage in the Bible. Everyone except Jonah, they were the most obedient people. What a shame it is that the the prophet of God, God's chosen messenger, was the least obedient person in this whole story. The, the, The fish did exactly what he was supposed to do. The people on the boat showed fear for God when they realized what, what was going on. You'll see later on, the people of Nineveh, when they heard the message, they repented. Everybody in the story was obedient except for Jonah. So what does that teach us? Just because we're one of God's children doesn't mean that we're immune to sin and disobedience. Arrogance, like I talked about earlier, arrogance and an unhealthy perception of God's grace leads to a break with fellowship with God. Not a break in your relationship, but a break in fellowship. So we don't get to that point of such major disobedience overnight. And Jonah didn't get to this point overnight. It's a daily decision to not be in fellowship with God, to not be walking with Him. And that, that's how we get there. So in thinking about that, about how others had a better attitude and obeyed God better than Jonah did, um, an exercise that your book gives you on page 133, um, I think this would be a simple exercise um, that could help break up some lecture and get some um, engagement going with your, with your group. I know some groups are very um, chatty and talkative, and y- you may have a group and you're saying, uh, Pastor Adam, I can't get them to talk at all. They just want me to lecture the whole time, and then w- we get up and leave. Um, if that's your group, this could be a simple thing for you to do on your whiteboard, uh, on a big piece of paper, uh, draw a line down the middle and have one labeled sailors, the other labeled Jonah, and just discuss uh, what were the attitudes of the two and what did that look like. That might help spark some, some discussion. So did Jonah ov- eventually obey God? Um, yes and no. So we see when Jonah uh, was in the fish, he did what a lot of us do. Uh, Maybe you've done this in your life in a a moment of desperation. You've seen it in TV shows and movies. 
something really bad's going on, you're, you're in a storm, a hurricane, you're on a boat that's sinking, you're trapped in an elevator, uh, you know, whatever's going on, in that moment, you say, God, if, if you just get me through this, I'll do whatever you want me to do. If you'll just get me through this and protect me and protect my family, then I'll do whatever you want me to do. And then that moment passes, and we don't usually keep our end of the deal. So Jonah is in the belly of this fish, and he's crying out to God. Jonah thinks that he's going um, to die. Now, he did eventually go and, and tell the message that he was supposed to, but as you'll see more next week on your, your second lesson from this, he was never really happy about it. He went and did it, but he was reluctant. Imagine your child. Have you ever told your child to do something, and they finally obey you, but the whole time they're kind of grunting and him hawing around, and they're not happy about it. Their, their attitude is not, not very good about it. That, that's what happened with Jonah. As soon as he preached the message, the people repented and believed in God, and God, God had mercy on them. And so you see that, you know, some think that the story um, of Jonah and the fish may have uh, preceded Jonah getting there and him, him preaching the message. And so the, the people may have been primed to listen um, and really ready to go. But the fact is, when they heard it, they repented and followed God. So some points of application. You know, what can we learn from Jonah? What can people in your class learn from Jonah? As, as I prayed and thought about this lesson, the thing that keeps coming back to me is Jonah running, just like the, the title in your book says, No Escape. There are people in your group, when you sit down in that room, there are people or a person that will be in that group that day that is running from God in some area of their life. They are running from God. And this gives you an opportunity to talk about that. This gives you an opportunity to talk about how when God calls you to something, you, you, your life is not going to go well until you submit to him, just like with Jonah. This can speak volumes to your group. Um, how did God show mercy and grace? Okay, well, the fish swallowed him, so that didn't seem really good at the moment. But ironically... As Jonah was fearing for his life in the belly of the fish, crying out this prayer to God, he thought that he was dying. So he's in the water. Imagine being thrown off a ship into the ocean and this big fish swallows you. What do you think is going to come next? I'm going to die. This is not going to end well. But that was Jonah's limited perspective. The whole time that he thought he was going to die, he was actually being saved. See, God had a plan that was outside of Jonah's understanding that was saving Jonah, even though he thought he was going to die. The instrument that Jonah thought was killing him was of God. It was actually his salvation. So how many people in your group are walking through a hard time, and it feels as though they are dying? Maybe they're running. Uh, maybe they're disobeying. Maybe God is trying to teach them something. That maybe the thing they think is the problem in their life, it's actually the, the solution. We have such finite understanding of the work of God. Similar to when you read through Job, Job didn't know what was going on behind the scenes. There's a spiritual battle that, that's taking place. And so your people um, can learn from that. Sometimes the trial that we question God, and we say, God, why am I going through this? Why are you doing this to me? Is brought on by our poor choices. Think about Jonah. If he would have obeyed, if he would have obeyed, would he have been in the belly of the fish? Um, in our lives, if we had obeyed God the first time, first time obedience, would we still be having to go through this second, third, fourth, and fifth trial? Um, and we're going through it because we haven't been obedient to God. We question God when life isn't going our way, but we have to ask, have I run from God? Uh, there is a good chance if you teach a co-ed class or a men's class, that there's a man that's in that class, especially in a co-ed class, that does not want to be there. And you probably know who he is. He shows up every week, but he doesn't want to be there. He shows up because his wife is making him be there. Um, he doesn't make eye contact with you very much. Um, he doesn't talk very much. You know, this lesson is a great opportunity for you to confront the act of disobeying God and running from God. Another point of application is that God's mission is bigger than our plans. Uh, God using the fish to rescue Jonah reminds us that his purposes 
are bigger than our plans. Um, God could have used anything um, to send this message to Nineveh. He, he could have sent angels. When Jonah disobeyed, he could have sent somebody else, but that wasn't God's plan. God's plan was for Jonah to go preach to the people. And Jonah needed to lay aside his plans and his preferences and his thoughts on who the people of Nineveh were and obey God and follow him. So God's purposes are bigger than our plans. For us in our lives, we have to learn that you know maybe we don't want to serve in the nursery at church. Maybe we don't want to do this for our wife or do this for our kids. But there's a purpose and plan that God has that are bigger than your plans. And the good news that we see from this in Jonah is that God can use anyone. God can use us. Just like he called Moses, just like he called Peter, um, God chooses whom he wishes for his glory for reasons that we don't fully know, but we, we do know um, that God uses people that the world would not use so that he can get the most glory from it. And those are reasons that we don't fully understand, um, but that makes me feel comforted that God would want to use me. So what I would encourage you to do as a teacher, um, just like the title of your lesson is No Escape, drive home the point this week of running from God's call. There may be somebody in your room, uh, maybe they need to repent of sin against their spouse, uh, maybe they're running from leading their family. Um, in a church this size, I have to think that we have somebody running uh, from God's call to vocational ministry to surrendering full time to be a pastor or a missionary overseas. Um, so take advantage of that this week and let them know that, that surrendering to God is the only option because God's purposes and his plans are better than your purposes and your plans. So I hope this video has been helpful to you. I'm excited about you being able to teach Jonah this week and next week. Uh, thank you for watching and I look forward to getting to know you all more um, in the next weeks and months to come. So thank you for watching. You have a good day.